Okay, so you've opened your account and you're ready to get started with Snowflake. So I'm going to cover the foundational concepts that you need to know to be able to work in Snowflake. Hey everyone, Gilberto from Snowflake here. By the end of this video, you'll understand how data, roles, and compute resources work together, and you'll be ready to start working on your own in Snowflake. Now, if you'd like to follow along, feel free to use a free Snowflake trial account to do so. And there's a handy link in the description that you can use to create one. And be sure to check out my other video for details on how to open one up. Okay, let's start building. The first thing we'll do is jump into Snowflake and quickly explore the user interface. So this Snowflake web interface is also called Snowsite. So you may hear me use that term every now and then. Now, I'm not going to be doing a complete UI walkthrough, but I quickly want to show you some parts of the UI that you're going to use often. So right now we're on the home page of Snowsite. On the left is a navigation panel, which you can use to move quickly between different areas in Snowflake. You can also use this quick action section to quickly access some commonly performed actions. And you can also browse and start projects in this section here as well. Okay, so that's the very quick UI overview. Now that we're in Snowflake, we should actually do something. So let's query some data so that you can get some experience with Snowflake's key concepts. To query data, we're going to work in a SQL worksheet, which is one of Snowflake's environments for writing and executing SQL. So let's create a new worksheet and query some data. I'll navigate to projects and I'll click on the button to create a new SQL worksheet. Okay, so what data are we going to query? Snowflake accounts are bundled with some sample data in them, so we'll use that data for now. But before we can start querying that data in our worksheet, we need to set a few things. Number one, our role. Number two, our compute resource. And number three, the data that we want to query. So let's hop back into the worksheet so I can show you how to set each one of those and explain what each one means. Let's start with setting our role. In Snowflake, a role defines what actions you can perform and what objects you can access. It's essentially your set of permissions. Here you can see the set of different roles available to my user. And each role has different privileges. Some can create databases, others can only read data, and some have administrative capabilities. I'm currently using the account admin role, which has full administrative privileges in this account. Now that's fine for this quick overview, but in practice, you would typically use more restrictive roles for your day-to-day -day work, generally following the principle of least privilege. Okay, so now that we've set our role, let's now set our compute resource, which in Snowflake is known as a virtual warehouse. Don't let the name confuse you. A virtual warehouse has nothing to do with data storage. In fact, the key thing to keep in mind is that virtual warehouses are completely separate from data storage. A virtual warehouse is a cluster of compute resources that can execute your SQL and other data related operations. You can easily scale these compute resources up or down or out for more computing power completely independent of your data. Check out the docs linked in the description for more information. I'll do a deeper dive on virtual warehouses in an upcoming video, so keep an eye out for that. Okay, so let's set the virtual warehouse. I'll set it to compute underscore WH, which is shorthand for compute warehouse. Now, when we set this, we're specifying that Snowflake should use this virtual warehouse to run the SQL in the worksheet, unless for some reason we change it programmatically in our SQL. Now, this is an extra small virtual warehouse, which is the smallest size available in Snowflake, but still incredibly powerful. And here you can see the rest of the sizes for virtual warehouses. You'll notice that they range from extra small to 6XL. This size corresponds to how much compute power each virtual warehouse provides. Okay, so with our role and compute resource set, we now need to specify the path to the data we want to query. And we do this by specifying the database and schema. In Snowflake, data is organized in a three-level hierarchy containing databases, schemas, and tables. At the top level, you have databases, which you can think of as containers for related data. You may have separate databases for different business units or data sources. Within each database, you have schemas. Schemas are logical groupings of related tables and other objects. You might organize schemas by subject area, like finance, sales, or marketing. And finally, within schemas, you have tables where your actual data is stored. This structure means that if you want to reference that table in your SQL, then the fully qualified name for that table would be database.schema.table. But if you set the database and schema using the UI or programmatically within your SQL, 
then you don't have to use the fully qualified path to the table. You can simply refer to the table by its name. So let's go ahead and do this. At the top of the worksheet, set the database to Snowflake Sample Data and set the schema to TPCH SF10. I'll be doing a deeper dive on what the sample data actually is, but for now, the details aren't important. Let's just use it for some simple queries. Okay. That's it. So with this set, I can now easily query any table inside of this schema simply by specifying its name. Now we're ready to query. So let's write a simple query. Let me query the customer table in this schema. I'll type select star from customer limit 10. This is going to return 10 rows from the customer table. And since I've set my database and schema, I only need to specify the table in my query. So I'll go ahead and run this. When I ran this query, Snowflake used my current role to check permissions, use the compute underscore warehouse virtual warehouse to execute the query, and the Snowflake sample data database as our default database. And here are the results. Super simple. Now this query executed successfully because our role has permissions to read from this table and our virtual warehouse provided the compute resources. Okay, that was really simple. We're not trying to do anything overly complex. I just want you to get familiar with the concepts of roles, compute resources, and data in Snowflake. In fact, the combination of these three things has a name that you'll hear often as you work in Snowflake. It's called context. So if you hear someone saying, set your context, check your context, they're referring to the combination of role, compute resources, and data being queried. Okay, so I've been showing you how to get started with SQL worksheets, which are perfect if you're working primarily in SQL. But what if you need to mix SQL and Python for maybe data science or machine learning work? That's where Snowflake Notebooks come in. So let me give you a quick overview. Snowflake Notebooks are a Jupyter-like environment where you can mix Markdown, SQL, and Python. This is perfect for data analysis, machine learning, or any other workflow that requires both languages. So here I've jumped into a notebook that I've already created, which also has some code that I can run. Now, just like worksheets, notebooks also make use of the concept of context. So you still need to set your role, warehouse, and database. What's really neat is that in a notebook, you can have SQL cells that query your data and Python cells that process the results, create visualizations, train machine learning models, and much, much more. So let's run the exact same queries as before, but this time in the notebook. I'll start by setting my context programmatically here using SQL. Next in this cell is the SQL query that we just ran in the worksheet. So if I click play, this will execute the code in the cell and there are the results. And down here in this cell, I am now actually using Python to query the data. In fact, this is the exact same query just in Python. And I'm specifically using Snowpark for Python to do this. Now, one thing that's different in notebooks is that there's also a compute resource called a container runtime. And this is tuned for beefy data science and machine learning work. I'll do a deeper dive into Snowflake notebooks in a future video, but for now, just remember, worksheets are handy for SQL focused work while notebooks can be used for mixed SQL and Python workflows. Okay, so let's recap what we've covered. You learned how to query data using SQL worksheets and Snowflake notebooks. You learned that roles define your permissions, virtual warehouses provide you with compute resources, and that data is organized in databases, schemas, and tables. You also learned that the combination of role, compute resources, and data being queried is known as context in Snowflake. These are foundational concepts that underpin just about everything you're going to do in Snowflake, from building data pipelines, to training machine learning models, to building applications. I'll dive deeper into each of these areas in upcoming videos and show you how to build end-to-end -end data solutions entirely within Snowflake. Now, if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.